watching WSBT TV, your hometown station. This is WSBT TV Eyewitness News Weekend. Again, good evening. Shock and grief continue to grip the Chicago suburb of Palatine. That's where seven employees of a fast food restaurant were found shot to death yesterday morning. Today, the victims were identified as the co-owners of the restaurant, three adult employees and two teenage employees. Meantime, police have questioned a former employee of the restaurant, but are not yet calling him a suspect. Excuse me. Sheriff's police spent the day searching Martin Blake's house. They're saying little about the man who lives here, but his neighbors are talking. And the Martin Blake they know is not a killer. Martin was kind of uh, young and, and wild, but, you know, a lot of kids are that age are young and wild. Uh, a little reckless, uh, but he was a nice guy. But Blake has had problems. Since graduating from Palatine High School in 1987, Friends say he's been fired from one low-paying job after another. He lasted only a few months here at Rally's Hamburgers, and just last week he was fired from Brown's Chicken and Pasta, the scene of the mass murder. He didn't have a good attitude when he worked there, and that was probably why he was let go. Did he seem angry about being fired? No, but that Martin doesn't show any outward signs of anger. Gabriel Ferris used to live with Blake. He describes him as quiet, troubled, and a little strange. He yeah. says Blake could be cruel both to people and to his pets. And he'd let the pit bull take just so much advantage to where it would start to bite the cat, and he'd stop it short of actually drawing blood on the cat. Authorities removed Blake's two dogs today so they could search his house for possible clues. Friends say Blake bought this house last spring, paid about $119,000 in cash. The money coming from an insurance settlement after an old accident. They say as a teenager, he was hit by a car and broke both his legs. Friends say the rest of the insurance money disappeared very quickly. Blake was depressed, they say, but did not seem angry. Certainly not capable of this level of violence. If he's involved in this mass murder, they don't think he acted alone. Back home, police say slick roads are to blame for the deaths this morning of two young members of a Milford family. Dead are six-year-old Daniel, Daniel Aitland and his two-year-old sister, Anna. Investigators say both children were buckled up. The accident occurred on State Road 15 north of County Road 800 north in Kosciuszko County. Now, investigators say the father of the children, Michael Aitlin, was driving southbound on State Road 15 when he lost control of the car on the snow and slush. The car slid sideways into the path of a northbound pickup. Michael Aitlin suffered minor injuries, but his wife and three-year-old son suffered head injuries and are hospitalized tonight. The driver of the pickup, Bridget Piper of Warsaw, was treated for abdominal pain. Two of her children, ages four and five, were treated for head injuries. And slick roadways may have contributed to a two-car crash in Berrien County today. Witnesses say one car apparently went out of control and was hit broadside by another. At least one person was taken to the emergency room. The accident occurred on Pipestone Road near Yore Avenue, southeast of Benton Harbor. Firefighters say a wood-burning stove is to blame for a house fire northeast of Buchanan today. The fire caused about $10,000 damage to the Paula Guthrie home on Lake Chapin Road. Guthrie and her family were in the home when the fire broke out. Everyone escaped safely. Firefighters say the home's wood-burning stove wasn't maintained properly, and that can be a hazard during these cold days when the stoves are used heavily. Chimneys get plugged up causes the heat and everything to back up into the pipes that aren't used to keeping that much heat in and then it transfers the heat into the walls and in turn through uh, conduction of the heat into the uh, wood timbers it starts the house on fire the house was on a narrow winding gravel road along the st joe river firefighters had problems getting their trucks in and out of the area two neighboring departments helped buchanan township by bringing water to the remote site well time now for a first look at our weather here's nancy Hi there, Terry. Looks like another cloudy day for Michiana. It will start it off on the cold side, right around 16 degrees and plenty of clouds. But by the end of the day, we should warm up to about 29 degrees, but the ugliness is to come. Looks like we could see some freezing rain, sleet, and snow. I'll have more coming up in weather. Well, just one day after being obliged to remove anti-aircraft missiles from southern Iraq, there is word tonight that Saddam Hussein's forces have gone inside Kuwait and stolen missiles. 
The Kuwaiti news agency says some 200 Iraqis entered the country in heavy transport vehicles and seized armaments in six Kuwaiti trenches. UN observers reportedly tried to block the Iraqis, but were surrounded by the invaders. A Pentagon spokesman says he is aware of the reported incident and that the U.S. continues to monitor the situation. Earlier today, Iraq's defense minister challenged the U.S., saying his country must assert its sovereignty. He added Iraq did not bow to U.S. pressure, saying those anti-aircraft missiles were removed voluntarily to a more strategic location. Well, today in Somalia, seven U.S. congressmen had to dodge sniper fire. It was the first visit by U.S. lawmakers since Operation Restore Hope began. The snipers began shooting as the congressional delegation arrived at one of Mogadishu's hot spots, a sports stadium where U.S. Marines are encamped, an area that falls along the Green Line, which divides the city between rival clans. Marines took up positions in the area while the congressmen were whisked away in armored personnel vehicles. Meantime, a ceasefire among the rival clans was supposed to take effect today, but there's no word on if it's being honored. Well, coming up next, a Notre Dame legend returns to Michiana to help kick off a new rehab unit. Hi, Jane again for Adams Remco. We've talked about Savin copiers, computers, fax machines, and more. Now I'd like to tell you about the more. Here at Adams Remco, that includes a free business needs analysis by our sales professionals, free office surveys, yes, even a free, sophisticated, creative copier management program. We call it New Office Technology. It's created by Savin for Adams Remco and exclusively for you, our customers. Call us, won't you? We're Adams Remco. It's nothing but off-heat fun on Nightcore. Well, better my feet and start me grinning. Before and during the holidays, most people are in the spirit of giving. Local charities, namely the Salvation Army, have come to count on increased donations during this time. But after the new year, it seems the spirit disappears. The only problem is the need doesn't, and being less fortunate is not a seasonal problem. So ordinarily, January and uh, February are the leanest months of the year for uh, the seat of funds and probably the biggest need for the people who uh, you know, don't have a paycheck or don't have the money to buy food to eat on. Even though the Salvation Army managed to help over 6,000 people during...